everyone, it's Raymond again. For this section, we have invited the head of technology from CLP Innovations to share with us uh, about technology and innovations. Hi, D. Hi, um, Raymond. Yes. Could you give us a brief introduction of CLP Innovation, please? Sure. Uh, the full name is actually CLP Innovation Enterprise Limited. Mm -hmm. So it's a fully owned subsidiary of CLP Holding. Well, uh, there are many companies under CLP Holding. One of the famous ones is called CLP Power. Uh, that is a power company that serves power for all the residents uh, for um, Kowloon and the New Territory area in Hong Kong. As a matter of fact, under CLB Holding, there are over a hundred different smaller legal entities like us uh, sp spread across the entire Asia Pac, including mainland China, uh, Australia, Taiwan, India, and some of the South Asian countries. Mm -hmm. The purpose of setting up CLP Innovation is actually to help CLP as a traditional utility company to transform from a traditional industry to a more modern uh, digital oriented business. So we are targeted to look for new business streams in the digital service area and also at the same time to help our clients to be more sustainable. So to achieve this, uh, we offer several different services. Uh, more directly, if the client they want to tap into directly to renewable energy sources, we can help them to set up solar farms or even wind farms to help them to get this green energy directly. Or for some of the clients, mostly like in Hong Kong, you don't have large rooftop or you don't have large land, uh, we can help you to install those IoT-enabled sensors or uh, applications in your buildings, in your offices, or even the entire campus to make it a smarter place uh, in order to help you to reduce your energy consumption and also eventually to achieve your carbon footprint reduction goals. Well, for some of the larger enterprises, uh, for example, those big ones, they have very committed uh, carbon footprint reduction goals. You often heard the term by 20 something, they want to be carbon neutral. So we also offer a product called carbon uh, credit, help you to offset those uh, unavoidable carbon emissions so that you can achieve your um, sustainability goals. And all those services I mentioned above are served under a single brand name called Smart Energy Connect, uh, which is the brand we're building right now. Wow, that's exciting to hear about. <coughs> so you must you guys must be doing a quite a lot of innovations using technologies. Yes. So in in terms of, uh, you know, we when we talk about smart office or something like right uh, during the COVID-19 uh, yeah. event, uh, a lot of people start to work from home and um, yes. you know actually a lot of remote learning happening as well. So what do you feel about this uh, area in um, from your side? Smart office, uh, we see great potential in smart office, especially uh, after um, COVID-19 or during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Because you see uh, during COVID-19, people start to work from home. So some people, they uh, go to office, some people don't. Even before the pandemic, you see the booming of the co-working space. Yep. Um, and uh, we believe in the future, you will see less and less fixed or assigned working space for most of the employees. Uh, which actually introduces uh, unpredictability of the office usage. This actually creates a challenge for the office manager because you want to uh, monitor constantly how many people are in the office so that uh, you can fully utilize your investment in the office because in Hong Kong, the land is very expensive. At the same time, you don't want the office to be overcrowded. So first, you want the visibility. Um, so we actually offer a lot of solutions to help the office manager to see how many people are right now in the office but that's not enough. You know, in order to get the maximum output of this investment, you also want to take control of some of the office utilities, such as uh, you want to turn off or turn on certain lighting, air conditioning, uh, just to save energy or to avoid uh, unnecessary uh, waste. So it means you have to install certain controllers in different areas of the office to help the office manager to make a uh, in-time decision to mm -hmm. turn on, turn off certain utilities. Well, the ultimate goal is actually uh, you want to automate all this. You don't want to, you know, constantly monitoring your office, but uh, actually you hand over all this to a computer or uh, the AI in the cloud. Okay. So how would you see the technical difficulties when you want to achieve a, a smart office? Yeah, um, smart office, um, I think in the market right now, mm -hmm. uh, you see a lot of the vendors around this area. Um, especially in IoT, but now most of the vendors, especially the big players, they are more focusing on uh, industrial solutions. You have a lot of the solution around the entire building, the entire park, or an entire factory. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty mature markets. And also on the other extreme, 
you also see a lot of smart home products, like you can control your home through your mobile phone or through a voice uh, over device. Yep. But uh, we feel that smart office or building is an overlooked market. Uh, there are seldom players uh, actually in this area. Even there are some at the moment, they are normally just focusing on one component of the building. For example, uh, you have a company that just offer lighting solutions. They're just dealing with lighting. Some are just dealing with uh, cooling, like HVAC or the, uh, the cooling fan coil. Or some just dealing with security, like CCTV or the, uh, the door security. Uh, well, we see there are not enough uh, utility or uh, not enough platform provider that can offer one single solution that to tap into all those different systems to make a federated uh, decision. So that the first challenge would be obviously to how to integrate into the, all those different solutions. Uh -huh. um, imagine you know, those solutions are produced by uh, different manufacturers, so they are at a different maturity level. Yep. When we are building our platform, we feel that some are very mature, that you have a cloud-ready API that you can call. Yep. Some are very primitive, they don't have internet connectivity. So you may need to have to retrofit the existing system by adding a PLC or by adding a router to connect it to the cloud so that you can interact with it. And also uh, what's more difficult is that um, because all those different technologies, they are diff using different standards. For the connectivity, for example, some are using uh, Wi-Fi, some are using um, Modbus, some are using Zigbee, some are using LoRa. So we have to actually learn all those technologies to make them all can talk to internet, which is using HTTP. Um, so that's just one of the challenges. Even we figured out how to connect them to the cloud, latency and the network performance is also another issue. Uh, because the vendors now in the market are normally from um, Europe, from America, from mainland China, and their server are normally hosted in those countries as well. So when we actually design a smart office solutions, you have to call their API, means you have to travel to the cloud and do some processing and then come back to the local to make an action. Well, when you're building a website, uh, you can, for normal user, you can wait a three to five seconds to wait for the website to load. You get yep. used to it. But for lighting or for the door, you know, you want to turn on the light you tap something on your mobile phone or you tap your card, you want the door to be open immediately. Yes. So three second wait is actually too long for, for, for the user experience. So that's actually one of the challenges, how to reduce uh, this latency. Uh, we sort of different ways, of course, one way is to actually you deploy a local uh, edge server to actually uh, reroute the traffic just to go to the local, but don't actually go to the cloud. Mm. And the last challenge, of course, would be the security, uh, because it's naturally a lot of people's concerns um, to tap into, especially the HVAC system, which is considered to be a critical system to a building. Well, considering uh, connecting the HVAC system to the cloud, uh, people will feel uncomfortable. But uh, in fact, it is. Uh, many current IoT solutions have a lot of uh, loopholes. Um, if you just Google online, actually, you can see a lot of the uh, traditional IoT uh, enable systems that are actually wide open uh, to the uh, internet because during the industrial design, mm -hmm. um, normally it's a closed-ended system intranet. So they didn't think of you know in the future one day this is going to be exposed to the internet. So uh, there's no security um, around it. So the challenge for us is when we actually enable the IoT capability of existing the old systems, how can we protect uh, the existing uh, asset? Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, so how would uh, Alibaba Cloud um, help CLP to do the innovation, you know, like to address some of the areas that you just mentioned? Oh, sure. Um, so CLP innovation, you can consider us as a uh, corporate startup. Mm -hmm. We are fully funded by our mother company, CLP Holding. So we actually run like a startup. Yep. We get funding every year. We pitch uh, our proposal and we get funded so that we can run for, for another year. And also we do a lot of the prototyping, uh, market testing, just like any startup. So first, we want agility. Yep. Um, the natural is we would go for cloud native services. Well, Alibaba Cloud actually offer a full range of different cloud native or uh, IAS services that allow us to try different designs, try different solutions in a very quick way so that we can build something very quickly and uh, test uh, in the market, we will ask the user to have a feedback. If they don't like it, we just destroy it. Uh, very convenient, so the agility. Second is uh, the cost. 
uh, like I said, we like a startup, so we are giving some seed money. Uh, so we have to prove that this product actually can sell in the market, and then we get further funding to build a production ready. So which means during the testing, we want to squeeze the cost as low as possible. Well, uh, for Alibaba Cloud, I think um, we tried different solutions, and we are made that some of the solutions are even free during certain period of time. And uh, somehow we have different channels actually to get a lot of the coupons to add to our credit so that um, we can actually try different technologies at a very low cost or sometimes uh, even free. Um, and the last but not least is actually uh, the um, packaging of the Alibaba Cloud product. For example, um, we uh, were trying to deploy smart office actually just for Alibaba office in Hong Kong. Uh, the office manager have a very specific requirement. She wants to build a custom built dashboard. Uh, she gave us a, a map of the office and want to plot the census exact location on the map. Well, this feature is on our product roadmap but it was not available last year. But that, that, that was an old project then last year. So uh, we were introduced to Alibaba Cloud Data V uh, says, oh, well, we can have a try. So we assigned one engineer to have a try. Uh, we have the prototype just uh, within one week. And then after two to three weeks iteration with the user, um, the entire project will finish within one month. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, du actually, during the starting of Data V, we also had a look at the backend services that are serving uh, all the data analytics services. We are amazed that there are a lot of out of box solutions actually lower the technical barrier for our data scientists or data analytics because. Um, you know, they are more comfortable with um, mathematics or with coding on their computer, yeah. but less comfortable to working with a cloud or uh, make a production-ready solution. Well, uh, if you have some of the out-of-box solutions, uh, you can just uh, you know, upload your code and then click a few buttons and publish the website very easily. Okay, so uh, you actually have already adopted Data V for the you know the office management sort of uh, um, um, usage. So. Um, how would you compare this data V against, you know, like other BI sort of tools out there in the market? Uh, BI, uh, I think it's an unfair comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, data V is so much more advanced than the traditional BI. Uh, for the first one is, um, it does not build on a uh, fixed, denormalized data warehouse as we know. As many uh, traditional BI tools, you must have a data warehouse. You tap into it so you can build different views uh, upon this uh, data warehouse. But for data V, uh, it's not necessary. Of course, you can, but at the same time, like for us, uh, we build our application mostly focusing uh, uh, follow the microservice architecture. While data V can directly uh, tap into our API at the backend. Because mm -hmm. remember, in the data V now, uh, for the Office project here, uh, there are over 20 different data sources. Uh, you can just you know tap into each of the data sources at backend, and then they can serve on the screen. Uh, you don't have to build a data warehouse. You, you don't have to download. You don't have to refresh. And again, the performance is uh, uh, very amazing because it's more like a website rather than a traditional BI solution. Because BI, you have the traditional ETL. You have the yeah. schedule like every five minutes or every ten minutes, every hour. Uh, but for data V. Uh, it's almost like a website, so we have 20 different uh, data sources. They are uh, coming in with the data update frequency uh, different. Some mm -hmm. are very every five minutes, some are real time, some are updated every day. So data we have this uh, capability to update each of the field asynchronously, which means uh, you just update one portion of the website without yep. refreshing the entire page. This actually dramatically improves the user experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other than data, we any other uh, technologies that you you are thinking to adopt in, in, on Alibaba Cloud? Um, of course, the like I mentioned, the entire uh, data analytics um, uh, solution or the service offering, because uh, for a normal um, data dashboard project, you would have ingestion, data processing, and the visualization. Yes. Data V, we just tested the visualization part. So we also now uh, experimenting in our labs the Alibaba MQ for uh, Kafka, which is a streaming service that you can uh, cache or, or subscribe to different data sources. And then the Max Compute, which is like a, a, a um, massive uh, service offering. You have a lot of small components within it. So it can replace the traditional ETL jobs because you can do real time 
and then you can use the microservice architecture within the Max Compute itself. And then all those can actually easily integrate it to the data V, uh, to the visualization part. So end-to-end uh, -end service. Okay. So looking into this innovation part, um, how would you view in the you know, next three or five years, how would the industry will go um, towards that part? That part? For the uh, data services, mm -hmm. specifically, um, very interesting you mentioned that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in 2019, uh, so last year I was invited to the Aspara uh, conference in Hangzhou. Uh, so during the conference, I learned a very interesting concept called the Middle Office concept. Yep. Uh, well, there's a, actually a book about it, uh, talking about now industry actually moving towards from uh, data warehouse or data lake to a, the so-called uh, data middle office and a business middle office. So I come back and then had a thought about it, uh, feel that, oh, we actually are already kind of doing it, but naturally uh, we build this architecture without knowing it. Because unlike uh, some of the traditional or, or long-term business that you have silos, you have legacy systems, and that people need the, the data lake to consolidate all data together, and you need data warehouse to join those data together so that you can uh, do queries or you can do uh, visualization out of it. But for us, we are a green grass, uh, green field, uh, basically, me means we don't actually have any legacy to carry. Mm -hmm. So we design everything in the cloud and then serverless uh, microservice architecture. So uh, after, a few, um, after a while, we look at our architecture, you will see now we have uh, nearly 100 different APIs that are sourcing different data sources and also serving to different applications. And now we just need a way to better manage, to better govern the data flow, which actually this is so-called the data mesh. So that now we're actually building our data catalog to formalize the architecture so all the data will come in, landing into Kafka, and then we use Spark to do data processing, and then to based on the need of different data, whether it's real time, whether it's unreal time, whether it's structured data, whether it's uh, you know, a, a object data, so you can choose different databases suit for that need. Some are high performance, some are cheaper, but low performance. And then you can build the data serving layer uh, through API. Traditionally, now we are using REST of API. We are in a uh, middle actually to merge from RESTful to GraphQL, which means you just need uh, like a one endpoint to actually to access all the backend data sources you have. And then at the front end, uh, you can use any application, either real time, non real time, mobile app, web app, to just query data from this single endpoint where you can uh, like fortify this access point by adding a lot of security features like access control, uh, traffic throttling. Okay. Right, so it sounds like uh, data definitely will play a more and more important role in the future, right? Yes. And also, could you share a little bit more about CLP's future development plan on Alibaba Cloud? Sure. Um, so first and foremost is actually we are looking at to expand our service just from Hong Kong to the Great Bay Area. Because yeah. Hong Kong, uh, you know, we have limited user here. Uh, it's our test ground. Uh, eventually, we actually want to expand our service to the rest of the operations uh, or the country that uh, CLP has operation. So Great Bay Area is our first priority. So uh, we're going to definitely choose Alibaba Cloud. Actually, we already set up a joint venture uh, in Shenzhen. Uh, all their services actually based in Alibaba Cloud uh, because we're going to move all, all the application um, locally uh, to benefit from the uh, geographical adjacency so that the user can uh, have better performance. And also, uh, it can save us a lot of trouble for the regulatory, uh, regulatory compliance, especially for many local, uh, local uh, regulatory uh, requirement that can be handled by Alibaba Cloud, so we don't have to worry about it. Secondly, is uh, we actually quite like the service uh, called China Gateway offered by Alibaba Cloud. Um, as I mentioned before, so some of the APIs or global uh, common services actually are hosted in the international site. Uh, which we will feel uh, the, the, during the testing, we actually feel there are some latency or service disruption when you uh, using application in China to call those services. So uh, with the China Gateway service, hopefully we can actually enhance the performance of application so that all the application we build in China, deploy in China, can equally enjoy all the services that, that are available to international users. Right. So it's quite excited to see how the technology can help to drive business innovations for CLP innovations. Thanks a lot for your sharing, Pete. It's a pleasure.